With an estimated construction cost sitting at around $5.7 billion, the Gordie Howe Bridge is a grandiose project that hopes to improve trade between the United States and Canada that's been muddled in controversy since it was announced. So why does the Gordie Howe International Bridge cost so much? And why are people against its construction? The Gordie Howe Bridge is a cable-stayed international bridge across the Detroit River, currently under construction. Named after Canadian ice hockey player Gordie Gordie Howe, whose celebrated career included 25 years with the Detroit Red Wings, and upon completion, it will be a new gateway between Canada and the United States. It will also be the longest cable stayed bridge in North America and the fourth longest in the world. The bridge will provide uninterrupted freeway traffic flow, as opposed to the current configuration with a nearby Ambassador Bridge that connects to city streets on the Ontario side. Construction of the Gordie Howe Bridge can be traced back to 2004, when officials from both sides of the border thought it was necessary to improve freight times across the busiest trade routes between Canada and the US. With traffic crossing the border expected to grow from 18,500 vehicles a day in 2016 to 26,500 by 2025, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will provide an orderly flow of people and goods between the two countries. The bridge aims to be an alternative to the 91-year-old Ambassador Bridge, which sees over 2.6 million truck crossings annually. By 2012, a Canadian Crown Corporation called the Winter Detroit Bridge Authority was created to oversee the construction and management of the bridge. Construction on the bridge will span over a period of 74 months with an estimated completion date of 2024. The bridge schematics show that it will be 2.5 kilometers long with a main span of 843 meters. At such dimensions, the bridge is expected to have six lanes to handle road, bike and pedestrian traffic. The Gordie Howe Bridge is designed as a state-of-the-art crossing, which will complement the future Windsor-Detroit skyline. The bridge was designed by the chief bridge architect of AECOM, Eric Berend. It will have two A-shaped towers built on the banks of the Detroit River, and the bridge will connect to an extension of Highway 401, locally named the Right Honourable Herb Gray Parkway, on its east side. It's designed to provide the highest safety and durability standards to the two North American borders. It will feature a toll system that ensures uninterrupted performance to provide a smooth experience for bridge users. Apart from the construction of the bridge, the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority will also build two port of entry buildings to accommodate security and custom facilities on both sides of the border. Now, these port of entry buildings will be built to be energy efficient and environmentally sustainable to keep up with North America's mandate for going green. The ports of entry will span a total of 121 hectares of land making them the largest in North America. Preparing the site for construction on both sides of the border cost $261 million, with most of the funds coming from the Canadian side of the border. The project will also include the construction of the Michigan Interchange, which will provide a streamlined route for drivers cutting down time spent on the road. The mega project is expected to improve transportation and launch a significant boom in the region, creating thousands of jobs and economic opportunities on both sides sides of the border. It's anticipated that local businesses will supply goods and raw materials during construction, which will provide regional economic benefits and additional employment opportunities in the area. Now, many permanent jobs will be created for the operation and maintenance of the bridge and ports of entry once finished. These new jobs will range from routine manual tasks to cutting-edge positions in information and communications technology. With direct connections to Ontario's Highway 401, and Michigan's Interstate 75, the bridge will provide the capacity to increase trade and encourage investment between Canada and the US. A study carried out by researchers estimates that the bridge will save about 850,000 hours per year for trucks, translating into billions of dollars in savings over the bridge's lifetime. Its $5.7 billion price tag makes it one of the most expensive projects in recent times. Comparatively, the Shanghai Tower and the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, cost a combined $4 billion. After completion, the bridge is expected to generate $70.4 million in toll revenue in its first year alone. The tolls will be used to repay Canada's contribution to the project, and no tolls will be charged 
but on the US side of the border. Now, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out why a public good like the Gordie Howe Bridge hasn't been received well. Now, after hearing all the benefits of the Gordie Howe Bridge, one may wonder why its construction has been riddled with setbacks from billionaires and landowners. The bridge's major pushback comes in the form of its ongoing legal battle with the American billionaire family that owns the competing Ambassador Bridge. The Ambassador Bridge was built privately because the governments of the United States, Canada, Michigan and Ontario were uninterested in the project. For decades, there were initiatives to span the Detroit River that separates Canada and the United States. All these initiatives finally culminated in a railroad tunnel in 1910, but the appetite for an overland crossing remained strong. In the 1920s, with the Detroit automotive industry providing strong backing, the private Detroit International Bridge Company was formed. Construction was completed in 1929, just in time for the Great Depression, which put the company into bankruptcy in the 1930s. Through this process, the company became publicly traded. By the late 1970s, Warren Buffett owned a quarter of the Detroit International Bridge Company, as did Matty Maroon. Drawing on the resources of his trucking firm, Matty Maroon bought out Warren Buffett and other investors, taking the company private for $30 million in 1979. In 2012, the bridge alone was estimated to bring $60 million a year in revenue. The Maroon family has been in court to stop the construction of the bridge, and they even went as far as appealing to then-President Donald Trump to ensure the bridge never sees the light of day. About 27% of the annual $400 billion trade between the US and Canada traverses the privately owned Ambassador Bridge. To the Maroon family, the bridge is a threat to the massive revenue they generate annually, even though their Ambassador Bridge has been plagued by congestion, particularly for trucks. This running series of legal battles would culminate in an 84-year-old Matty Maroon spending a night in jail for contempt of court. That particular case was over Maroon's failure to comply with Michigan's requirement that the Detroit International Bridge Company build ramps to tie the Ambassador Bridge into the interstate system. Now, most recently, companies controlled by the Maroon family filed a suit arguing that Michigan's Department of Transportation could not spend tax dollars on the Gordie Howe project. In 2021, they lost the case at Michigan Supreme Court after it ruled that the state is not in violation because Canada fully reimburses its project expenditures. In response to the claim of congestion on the Maroons Bridge, they sought to build another bridge next to the Ambassador Bridge, but the offer didn't sit well with the Detroit City Council. The Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority also had to worry about parcels of land needed to construct the massive bridge. For massive projects like the Gordie Howe Bridge, getting the required land can be the difference between keeping with its building timeline or spending several years in legal battles. As of 2018, the Winter Detroit Bridge Authority said they own 90% of the land needed for the project. However, with the full backing of both the United States and Canada, its land issues should be resolved quickly, and citizens can expect the bridge to be completed by 2024.